Hey everyone, Mike Smith here. I'm just about to reinstall an instance of WordPress on my domain. I had a problem with my old website and uh, I've taken this as the opportunity to uh, to reinstall and, and restart from scratch. So I thought I'd just uh, record my screen to, uh, to let everyone know how simple this process can be. So follow along and if you have any questions just post them in the comments below. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first of all, of course, you need to log into your um, website hostings control panel, and generally that will be something called cPanel. On your web host, it may be slightly different. It may have a slightly different look and feel to it as well. cPanel is very common. How do you get to that? Well, generally, it would be your domain, and then forward slash, just like that, and then you you would either type cPanel like oops sorry cPanel like that and that would take you to a login screen you then use your username and your password given to you by your web host not to be confused with your domain registrar okay and that'll take you to uh, cPanel and I'll just go up to the top of the screen here so this is my um, uh, these are all the tools in cPanel. As you can see, your file manager and a whole bunch of other things. We'll be using web redirect in a moment. I can set up email accounts. And way down the bottom here is an apps installer. Now you can install WordPress manually if you like. It's not not a big drama, but um, might as well use the the tools that they provide. And if you look at this uh, screen section here you can see that WordPress is only one of many things that you can install on your self-hosted website. Joomla is another content management system, shopping carts um, and a whole bunch of other possibilities here. So so WordPress is uh, prob possibly arguably the most common thing that you would probably install on your website um, and uh, but it's only one of many. Now the reason I point that out is because I'm going to install WordPress onto a subfolder uh, on my site, and um, and so and the reason for that is because I may install another application into another subfolder. So I'll show you that as we go along. Okay, so the first thing, uh, as I mentioned, is um, I want to install my application into a subfolder. What I mean by that is I want it to live in a folder on my domain which I'm going to call web okay um, uh, often people will install their um, website content into the root directory which would look like that but I don't want to do that um, and so if I want that to happen of course first I need to con uh, to create that that folder um, on my on my site and I use Control Panel's file manager to do that. So that was one of the applications right at the top there, file manager. File manager, uh, in the public HTML, I've created a folder there, and in that folder I've created just a little file that just lets me know that, that, um, that you know, that, that I can get to that folder. So, so if I press enter here, browse to that folder, and I've created this little HTML file there. Hi. So I know that that folder is working, um, and that's the first step. Okay, next I'm going to create a redirect to that folder, and I'm going to use this tool to do that, so that when someone types in my domain, just like that, they will actually be redirected automatically to that subfolder uh, where where my website actually is. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I'm using a subfolder because I can control where people go um, and I may have different versions of my website on different folders and I want to point them to the most up-to-date version. Okay, so uh, created a folder, put a little test file in there and uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, create the redirection. Okay, so to create a redirect I'm going to use the redirect tool in cPanel that makes it all nice and easy so that's uh, just in cPanel there and I click on that and it brings up this um, page I'm going to make it a permanent redirect not a temporary one 
um, leave all of these default settings here. I want to redirect with or without www so that no matter what anyone types they're going to be directed as, as I wish. And uh, as you can see I've already done this but all you would need to do to create a new one is type in um, um, the new folder there. And as you can see there's a little um, warning sign here. You have to you have to type in the entire um, the entire web address, right? So uh, it would be HTTP um, forward slash colon forward slash forward slash and then the domain and then the subfolder like that. So that's that's what it would take if this was the new folder. If you have a security certificate on your site, it would be HTTPS. I don't happen to have one on my personal blog, so I haven't worried about that. But as you can see from this um, this um, annotation here, the way that this is laid out, this doesn't have to be, this redirect destination does not have to be on your site at all. It could be a completely different website. So that's in fact how you create a redirect from one domain to another. All right, so as I said, I've already done that. So what that means now is that if someone types in not that full address but the root domain, just the normal domain, they'll end up going directly to there. And so now that folder is ready for the installation of um, the web application WordPress. So we're going to do that next. Okay, so we've got our folder set up and the redirect set up. So we go back to cPanel, back up here and back to cPanel home and uh, scroll right down to the bottom. Now from this point on, um, the, the, the procedure that I'm going to follow it would be the same if you were simply installing it into the root domain uh, without a subfolder. So uh, I'm going to select WordPress here and this is going to lead me through a series of steps. It's very easy to follow. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, leading you leading you through, explaining what it's doing. Um, and, uh, and as you can see also on the left hand side, the, WordPress is only one of many things that you can do with a self-hosted site. So, um, but let's just keep it simple now. I'm going to install WordPress. So it tells me that I've got plenty of space. Um, and I, so I just press install now. Now here's where I set up some settings. Okay, so this is my protocol. So it could be um, um, anything depending on the way that your domain is registered. So I'm going to just leave it as without www, but your site may need that. And if you've got a security certificate, obviously you'd need one of these too. So I'm just going to leave it there like that. Um, and the subdirectory, which I've set up, is going to be web. Um, and I can, I can set up a site name here and a site description if I want, but of course after the WordPress uh, installation is complete I can change that. So, um, But just uh, for the for stamps I'll do that here. I go on the web. Okay, um, and thoughts and memories. Alright, now this is kind of useful to think about if you're uh, putting up a um, uh, development site or a very complex site, you might want to use multi-site. Um, now this can be changed afterwards, but if you're going to do this, it's probably best to do it right now. If you're not sure, check with your web developer. Um, um, you, you might want to enable this just in case you need it later on. It's a pretty complex uh, concept and, and, um, and there are some consequences associated with this, but give it some thought. Check with someone before you go any further. Okay, then the next thing of course is um, an admin username and password. Now please don't leave it as admin and definitely don't leave it as pass. Alright, so I'm just going to create a uh, username and password here. Remember that this will be the username for you to log into WordPress. Different from your um, domain registrar and different from your uh, cPanel login. This is just for your WordPress. Um, and um, you're going to need to, um, to nominate a, um, an email address here as well. So have a think about 
this will be your your super user if you like or your super administrator after you create this account you will probably want to create an account for your own use so I would not suggest you putting your personal email here create um, something like admin on your domain name as a new um, email address and you can use cPanel's tools to do that um, and then um, you know for your own personal posting on your website create a user account for yourself with a different email address anyway so I'm just going to go through this process and then I'll get back to you okay so I've chosen my admin uh, username and password and email address um, and next is uh, the language uh, most likely you're going to leave it as English select plugins um, I think this section is likely in the future to have more options um, this this is a very common and quite a useful um, safety feature of WordPress. Um, this plugin allows you to limit the amount of incorrect logins on your website. So if someone tries to log in, makes a mistake three times or five times or whatever, they will be locked out for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, um, according to the settings. What I do is I tend to enable this and then disable it afterwards, uh, just while I'm developing the website. Um, and then when it uh, when it goes public or live, if I'm doing this website for someone else, then I will enable it again and uh, set the settings up as required. But so yes, I'm going to enable that so it gets installed. There are a bunch of other similar plugins that you could install afterwards as well. Okay, uh, advanced options. All right, so you can have a look at those. Uh, you're probably unlikely to want to change the database name it's not a problem you can if you like it will create a database on your web server um, the prefixes for the tables within that uh, database as well you can change these if, if you like but there's it's unlikely to be necessary um, you can uh, also change these notifications disable update notification emails this these emails will go to your admin email address auto upgrade um, I would suggest now for a personal blog I, I'm going to uh, um, not check this okay so be careful on the logic here disable update notification emails no I don't want to disable I want to know when updates are available but I tend not to want the update to happen automatically and there's a number of reasons for that lots of people have different views but this is just my view I also don't want uh, auto upgrade of the plugins because uh, if if the website becomes complex and has lots of plugins there might be interactivity interoperability issues with one plugin um, updating itself and then breaking the whole site uh, I also don't want to do um, upgrade of the WordPress theme so I want to know about them but I don't want it to happen automatically that's just my preference okay um, this is useful as well backup location um, I think for you know setting up a new site it's probably a good idea to maybe back up once a week or the rotation of four um, so that means it'll make four uh, four backups and then start overwriting the first and and if you're setting up a, a new website this is a good place to start there may be other uh, backup utilities you add later on okay uh, so that's uh, the advanced settings advanced options next is a theme most likely uh, this is not the time to be selecting a theme um, you certainly can do that but um, it's optional and you can change it later on so I'm just going to leave the default theme um, and now I'm ready to install uh, I always put um, an email address here just in case I muck it up or I forget to write down my username and password these will be sent to this email address and this could be different from your administrator email address so okay we're ready to install okay so I'll press install okay when I press install um, it will run through the installation procedure so let's watch it let's watch it go through that As you can see, uh, it's not going to take very long, uh -huh, and I've created, an, uh, I've, I've uh, caused an error.
Um, so the mistake that I've made is this particular installation script is not happy with the fact that I've already created a directory. So what I'm going to do is uh, delete that directory and then uh, just press install again. Okay, now your uh, installer may, may be totally happy with an existing um, folder. Um, but anyway, that's okay. So I'll just run through that process again. Okay, so here in my file manager, I'm just going to delete that directory. Um, yes, that's fine. Okay, so now if I... Um, my, oh, that will upset the redirect, obviously. So I'll just see what happens. That'll be interesting. It'll probably give me a 404 error or something like that. Yep, 404. But the thing is that I wanted to test the redirect worked before I set up my website anyway. So, uh, so that's okay. That's no problem. Okay, so now back to... Uh, back to the installer. I think it will remember all of my settings. I'll just go down to the bottom again. Um, just checking that it's that it's remembered all my settings. Yes. Yep. That's fine. Okay. So ready to install again. Let's watch it. Right. Checking the data. I'll just let this play through. Oh, sorry, no, I'll just pause the screen recording while this happens. <laughs> Literally, it took less than 20 seconds after I paused the screen uh, recording. So, here we are. The software is uh, installed successfully. Uh, here are the details. Uh, that's the web address. So, if I now go up here and just check the redirect at the same time, there's a website with the default theme, ready to go. Uh, and as uh, as you can see, the web um, the administrative URL is simply the website with wp slash admin. So I can type that in there. wp slash admin. Oops, if I could spell properly. And so now I should be able to log on using my user uh, name and and password. Um, and that's all there is to it.